At the end of the last lecture, we have seen that for Frege, numbers are about concepts. For example, number n plus 1 belongs to a concept under which exactly n plus 1 object falls, or number 2 belongs to a concept under which exactly 2 object falls. But this approach is not enough to identify numbers. The approach that the number n belongs to a concept g is not enough to decide, is not able to decide whether that number is identical to another number. Even though we know that Julius Caesar or any other human being is not a number, this definition is not able to decide whether Julius Caesar is a number or not. The source of the problem is hidden in the form of this expression. In this expression or any other expression with the same form like Jupiter has four moons, Venus has zero moon, France has one president, in these expressions numbers are treated as if they are properties of concepts. A property of a concept is not enough to identify them. But for Frege, numbers are self-subsistent objects. Like in this example, the number of Jupiter's moon is 4. The expression, the number of Jupiter's moon, refer to an object. But if numbers are objects, then why don't we have any mental picture for the object designated by the number of Jupiter's moon? Or the number of presidents of France, or the number of Venus's moon, or the number 4. The, why don't we have any mental picture for numbers? The solution to this problem is the context principle. Context principle is introduced with two other principles in the introduction part of Grundlagen. First principle is that there must be a sharp separation of the psychological from the logical, the subjective from the objective. Second one, which is the context principle, the meaning of a word must be asked for in the context of a proposition, not in isolation. Third one, the distinction between concept and object must be kept in mind. All these principles are, are crucial to understand Frege's overall project, but for now, context principle is important for us. According to context principle, only in the context of a proposition do words, do words mean something. One must always keep in mind the complete proposition. To obtain the concept of number, the sense of a numerical equation must be determined. So, in order to obtain meaning of a number term, the sense or the conceptual content meaning of a numerical equation must be determined. Numerical equations are in this form. The number that belongs to the concept f is the same as the number that belongs to the concept g. As you see, the number that belongs to the concept f is part of this equation. So, meaning of this part depends on meaning of whole expression. In order to obtain meaning of this part, we need to have the conceptual content of all this equation. But how can we get the conceptual content of all this equation? There is one strategy to solve it. Frege proposes one strategy and this strategy is called recurring the content or carving the content in the relevant literature. For example, the direction of line A takes place in this whole expression. According to context principle, meaning of direction of line A depends on the meaning of this whole expression. But since we do not know the meaning of whole expression, right, or let's say uh, we haven't justified its, mean, its meaning yet, we can use this biconditionality to obtain the conceptual content of this expression because biconditionality here shows that these two expressions have same conceptual content. A is parallel to B and this expression, the direction of line A is equal to the direction of B, have same conceptual content. So we can use conceptual content of this one, which is epistemologically more accessible, right? This one is epistemologically less accessible. We can use conceptual content of this one to determine the sense of direction of line A. Frege used same strategy for number terms. The number of f's takes place 
in this whole expression, numerical equation, right? The number of f's is identical to the number of g's. So in order to obtain the meaning of the number of f's, we need to have the meaning of this equation. But similarly, since this is epistemological and less accessible, this is epistemologically a problematic sentence, uh, it is difficult to get its meaning. We use, again, a biconditional form to get its conceptual content. These two sentences have the same conceptual content. The number of f's is identical to the number of g's if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between f's and g's. So since this is epistemologically less accessible and this is epistemologically more accessible, we use meaning of this one to obtain the sense of this part. This is recurring the content. This whole principle or whole biconditionality is called Hume's principle. For David Hume, identity between two numbers is nothing but one-to-one -one correspondence between two sets of objects. The number of forks is identical to the number of plates, if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between forks and plates. In general, the number of f's is identical to the number of g's, if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between f's and g's. This part is equinumerosity, equinumerosity between f's and g's. Equinumerosity is an easy concept. Suppose p is the concept lambda x, x is a moon of Venus, and q is the concept lambda x, x is a round square. Under p, no object falls, same for q. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between p and q. q p and q are equinumerous concepts. Equinumerosity is, as I said, epistemologically more accessible concept. As you see, there is nothing obscure with equinumerosity as it is in this first order logic formulation representation of equinumerosity. But this part, the number of f's or identity involving in the number of f's is the problematic part. That's why Frege devotes whole book on the concept of concept of number. Frege, Hume's principle is very useful to understand or Hume's principle is very useful for Frege's overall project. But Frege wants to go one step further and wants to prove Hume's principle. I mean, he wants to prove that the number of f's is identical to the number of g's, if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between f's and g's. In order to prove this, this biconditionality, he proposed explicit definitions of numbers. In this proposal, the number of f's, any number that belong to any con a concept f, is the extension of the concept equinumerous to the concept f. As you see, this is a second order concept, because this concept is about other concepts. Under this concept, all those concepts that is equinumerous to f fall. For example, for zero, zero belongs to some concept, right? What is that concept? A logical one is the number of up to objects that are not identical with themselves, right? There are zero objects that are not identical with themselves. So, it itself. So, the number zero is the number that belongs to the concept not identical with itself. Then the explicit definition for zero is here. The extension of the concept equinumerous to the concept lambda x, x is not x. So what are those concepts that falls under this extension? Lambda x, x is a round square under which no object falls. Lambda x, x is not identical to itself. This is the same concept. A concept is equanimous to itself. Lambda x, x is a moon of Venus. No object falls. And so on. You can add all other concepts under which no object falls. So extensions of all these concepts are empty sets. Since in the mathematical universe there is only one empty set, we do not need to iterate them and zero is the number whose ex the zero is the extension which consists only of empty sets. For number one, number one is the number of the objects that are identical to zero, right? There is only one object that is identical to zero, that is zero itself. So only one object falls under this concept, identical to zero. So then the Number one is the extension of the concept equinumerous to the concept lambda x, x is identical with zero. What are those concepts? Falls under extension. 
lambda x x is identical to zero, lambda x x is the author of Tractatus, Wittgenstein falls, and all other concepts under which only one object falls, as you see here. Similarly, number two is the number of objects that are either zero or one, right? There are two objects that fall under this concept identical to with zero or zero or one. Those are zero and one. So then the number two is the extension of the concept lambda x. X is equinumerous to the concept lambda x. X is identical with zero or x is identical with one. What are those concepts? The concept itself under which two object falls. Authors of Principia Mathematica, Whitehead and Russell Falls, and all other concepts under which exactly two object falls. As you see, these are those concepts, extensions of those concepts. Right, as you see, these are, uh, there is a pattern here. You can uh, use same general definition to define uh, number three, number four, number n in general is involved in a series starting with zero, ending with n minus one. You can check this by yourself. So then you can define number n with an extension. I think it's easy for you by now. So the aim of proposing these explicit definitions is to prove Hume's principle. Hume's principle is a biconditional expression. In biconditional expressions, left part implies right part and right part implies the left. Like the number of f's is identical to the number of g's implies that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between f's and g's and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between f's and g's implies the number of f's is identical to the number of g's. So we will prove first the left to right part. Left part is the number of f's is identical to the number of g's. Now we are going to prove that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between f's and g's once we assume this. Here is the explicit definition of number of f's, the extension of the concept equinomerous to the concept f. This is for f, number of f's. And here we have the definition for number of g's. The extension of the concept equinomerous to the concept g. These are the extensions. Since this is an informal proof, I skip some steps. But uh, since there is identity here, these extensions must consist of same concepts. Then, as you see, f and g is under same extension and that extension is the extension of equinomerous concepts so then f and g are equinomerous that is end of left to right proof or end of the proof for left to right implication right f and f and g are equinomerous concepts has same meaning with there is a one to one correspondence between f's and g's now let's see right to left proof. Now we assume this part f and g are equinomerous concepts, have same meaning, and we are going to prove that the number of f's is identical to the number of g's. You know, equinomerous is a transitive symmetric reflexive relation. I think you all know these relations, right? For example, transit transitivity, if there is a relation between a to b then b and b to c then there is a relation between a to c since equinomerity has all these properties then any concept that is equinomerous to f is equinomerous to g because f and g are equinomerous concepts you can also say any concept that is equinomerous to g is equinomerous to f then the extension of the concept equinomerous to the concept f, extension that consists of all those concepts that are equinomerous to concept f, and the extension of the concept equinomerous to the concept g are same, are identical. As you see, these are definitions for numbers, right? Explicit definitions. So then, number of f's is identical to the number of g's. 
So that's the end of the Grundlagen. Thanks.